Welcome to Washington National Cathedral on this Tuesday morning. My name's Randy Hollerith. I'm the Dean of the Cathedral, and as always, I'm so grateful that you have decided to join us for this brief service of morning prayer. Let us begin. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let us pray. Lord, help me today to shut up, listen up, open up, and lighten up. You have a lot more to show and tell me than I have to show and tell you. Please be patient with me. Allow me a glimpse, give me a hint of what is really going on around me as I walk and watch and wonder and work through this unfolding day. I know I need to worry a lot less. I need to stop overreacting, to be calmer, and not to insist on being special or right. The world does not revolve around me, nor am I its or anyone else's savior. I must learn to look up and out, not just in. I must try harder to be wiser, nicer, less grouchy, more sensitive human being. Please, Lord, help me pray my life and live my prayers. Amen. Our collect for today. Grant, O merciful Lord, that your church being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 23, verses 23 to 26. Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint, dill, and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting the others. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat but swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the outside of the cup and the plate, so that the outside may also become clean. Here ends the lesson. Wow, that's some reading. The whole 23rd chapter of the Gospel of Matthew is in fact taken up with Jesus railing against the Pharisees and the scribes. We only heard a small amount of that today. Our reading for this morning is just one small piece of that chapter. Repeatedly, Jesus says to the scribes and the Pharisees, woe to you. Over and over again, he points out their hypocrisy, how good they are at living out the trappings of their faith, and how poorly they actually embody the truth of their faith. This is Jesus, the prophet at work, speaking truth to power, trying to redeem the essence of his faith. Judaism. It was Talk like this that got Jesus into trouble. It was talk like this that eventually led the religious leaders to seek his death. Throughout his ministry, Jesus places special emphasis on our interior lives much more than he does our exterior appearances. He tells us that it's not enough that we refrain from murder or adultery, as it says in the Ten Commandments, that just avoiding those things is not enough. 
but that God actually demands that we refrain from hatred and lust as well. He reminds us that what lives in our hearts is as important as how we behave. Jesus thought that authenticity was important, that we are who we say we are. He was disgusted by the fake, deceptive ways in which the religious elite appeared to be so devout and faithful and yet were only wearing masks, pretending to be what they appeared to be. Now, there are about a hundred different sermons in this passage. But for today's purposes, I want to ask, how many of us like to appear as if we have it all together, when in fact the truth is sometimes or often we are barely putting one foot in front of the other? How many of us like to wear the face of competency, competency and professionalism when the truth is inside we feel rather shaky or incompetent? How many times do we like to appear jovial when in fact on that particular day we may be full of anger or frustration or sadness? Henry Nouwen wrote a wonderful little book called The Wounded Healer, which I highly recommend to you if you haven't read it. It's full of wonderful wisdom about being a servant um, in the name of Jesus Christ. At one point, Nowen writes in that little book, when the imitation of Christ means to live your life as authentically as Christ lived his, then there are many ways and forms in which a person can be a Christian. When the imitation of Christ means to live your life as authentically as Christ lived his, then there are many ways and forms in which a person can be a Christian. Now one wants to make the point that one of the greatest gifts we can give to others is not to hide who we are from others, but to be authentic. All of us have our faults, our wounds. All of us are imperfect. And sometimes it is the revealing of our own imperfections, our own wounds, that can be the most helpful thing for someone struggling to deal with theirs. This is part of what it means to be a wounded healer. Ask yourself this question today. How can I use the wounds I have acquired in this life to help others? How have others in my life used their own wounds to help heal me? Our Lord does not require perfection from us in this life, but he does implore us to be authentic, to spend as much time on our interior life as we do on our external appearance. Amen. Now would you join with me as we pray the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you alone know the secrets of our hearts. You alone understand the burdens we carry and the pain that we bear. As we make our way through this life, we need your healing grace. Grant us not only those things that we ask for, but more importantly, give us those good things that we need. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. On this morning, we lift up to you all those who are on our hearts and minds today.
I pray especially this morning for the people of Maui as they continue to cope with so much loss and devastation. Watch over them. I pray for all students and teachers as they return to school. May this be a year of learning and growth. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I end this morning with a beautiful old prayer called the Prayer of Dedication. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I give you my hands to do your work. I give you my feet to go your way. I give you my tongue to speak your words. I give you my mind that you may think in me. I give you my spirit that you may pray in me. Above all, I give you my heart that you may love in me your Father and all humankind. I give you my whole self that you may grow in me so that it is you, Lord Jesus, who live and work and pray in me. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. Amen.